is Georgian Hughes, and this is The Bite Show. And we are really blessed to have Dr. Joseph Lumpkin with us. We have forever uh, in Christianity, as long as Christianity has been uh, here, we, we have waited for the return of Jesus. Well, if Jesus were going to return, I would think that he would have returned when Stalin was butchering millions of people, that when uh, Mao was butchering millions, and... Uh, um, Hitler was killing off untold numbers, especially 14 million Christians, um, that is never, never talked about. It's always the Jews. Uh, well, I got news for everybody. There were a lot of Christians that were snuffed. Um, why wouldn't he have returned during one of these calamitous um, things that have gone on? Because I think we have the story of the resurrection incorrect. Yes. I believe it with my whole heart that Jesus is resurrected within us. Yes. That the entire story is built around the fact of of, of finding the Christ in us and and finding that seed of God and resurrecting Christ in us. And that in itself is the story of Christianity. That's what he came to, uh, to provide us with, a path toward the resurrection of Jesus. When, when he said to us, greater things than I do will you do, mm -hmm. he said everything he needed to say. It, it, and basically that was saying, I am not God, because yeah. if I were God, you couldn't do better than I. Yeah. But I provide you a path to your godhood inside you, and when you find it, greater things than I have done will you do. You will be like me. Mm -hmm. The Bible also says that when we see him, we will see that we are like him. That is to say, when we are together again, we will see that we are like him. The Christ Spirit is within us, and every single Easter, I I go around basically in a uh, in just wonderment of the fact that this point is missed. It's it's been hidden from us. We we are led to believe that we can do no better than what we're doing when yeah. he came. And, and and suffered for simply that message. Yes. But that message, and I hate to go on like a preacher, but I'll just end like this, that message flew in the face of the established hierarchy of, that re of the religion of the day. Yeah. Because if we are Christ, each individual one, then we don't need a rabbi or a priest or a preacher. That's we right. We are self-contained. That's right. And we don't need a temple uh, to go to. <laughs> and we don't need to sacrifice a perfect heifer on some damned altar. Um, God, it's so backwards, Joseph. It it's just, it's shameful. You will be like me. Mm-hmm. The Bible also says that when we see him, we will see that we are like him. 
That is to say, when we are together again, we will see that we are like him. The Book of Jubilees is also known as the Little Genesis. It looks like we can narrow the dating of, of this book to around 100 to 140 B.C. Well, could it be that one of the reasons they didn't want it as part of the canon is because it would upset the agenda? It, uh, it, it does seem to uh, go toward... Uh, what I would call a, uh, a, a, a hyper-literal state of Judaism uh-huh. that uh, that would have been in conflict with uh, Christianity. Yeah. Uh, it, it appears in the Ethiopic Bible as uh, canon, so it is not like we can't say that uh, Jubilees and Enoch, for that matter, are not canon. They are to the Ethiopic Christians. They're just not in our Bible. Well, that, that's kind of my point. Um, the, could the reason be that they're not uh, part of uh, our quote end of quote canon is because it kind of upsets the agenda? It does. Uh, you have to understand that Christianity is not the same throughout the world. The right. East Everybody has always wondered, how could Moses talk about his own death in the Old Testament? Yeah. One of the questions that we have, right? Yeah. Um, so we're going through, through the Old Testament, and we get to a point where these five books are supposed to be written by Moses, and yet all of a sudden we're talking about Moses' death, and we wonder, how could a dead person write a book? Yeah. <laughs> Well, who did Cain marry? Christianity itself is doing such such things as uh, trying to uh, absorb the uh, the sun sun worshippers and set uh, Christianity on a course where 
uh, say Christmas is also practicing at the same time Saturnalia. We ran into a problem with our own mind, more or less. We we came to this bifurcation. We could not figure out how God, who is supposed to be all good, could also facilitate evil. Yeah. So we broke Satan off and made him a free agent. Um, uh, and, and still today, we will have this conversation within church. God is in control. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And then, at oh. the same breath, we'll hear Satan controls this world. Yes. Uh, and it's it's double talk. Yes, it is. It's uh, uh, you, you either have a God who is in control of everything, or you have a God who is not in control of everything, and so. We absorbed the Zoroastrian element uh, in the Middle East, which has an absolute good and an absolute evil uh, set of deities. And from their idea, we allowed ourselves to free God of the evil that is in the world. The devil is not in the detail. It's in each and every one of us and probably in our pants. So there you go. Yeah. Well, um, this business of God creates good and he creates evil, (laughs) he's at loggerheads with himself. He is. He Uh, is. um, Um, and, And all the wars and the bloodshed kill every man, woman, and child. Uh, even their animals, uh, you know, this this whole theme of genocide is just why did this so-called God feel it necessary to teach men to war, to do genocidal acts, uh, you know, kill, kill, kill. Um, when he is alleged to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and seeing the end from the beginning, which I don't believe. Um, And and let's don't forget that in the New Testament way of thinking, he is also all-good and all-kind and all-love. Yeah. So, So why indeed? Well, what we see that has not been explained very well is an evolution of God. We, we haven't done a very good job at, uh, uh, at meshing the origins of our own God. Mm-hmm. El was a Canaanite God. He was a war God. He was the Old Testament God. Yeah. Uh, and, and he was a cruel person, but he was also part of the uh, head of the pantheon of gods mentioned in uh, uh, in Psalms, Psalms 84, I believe it is, where it said, uh, God stands in the pantheon of God, commanding them. And uh, and so we, we have little sneaky points like this that, that filter through that we have not quite gotten rid of yet, where we see... Uh, a, a pantheon, much like a Greek pantheon of God, with El being the head. And one theory says that uh, Yahweh was uh, a son of his, a minor god.
get this bifurcation, this uh, this diversion of, uh, and almost like, if you will, a a, a, a schizophrenic type of God. Mm-hmm. And and that's part of our problem is that we came. Uh, the foundational idea of God of El came from a warlike uh, Canaanite nation, and we have built off of that. Uh, oh, yeah. Our religion keeps crashing because we do not have a, a good understanding of its foundation. Well, you can certainly say that again. My goodness. Let me ask you, Joseph, could this L be, and Yahweh, be um, part of the Anunnaki? I don't know, George M. Uh, I can't even speak to that. I, I don't have enough data to draw a conclusion. Here's the other thing that's just quite odd. To to make a human, we only need about 10% of the DNA that we are carrying. Yeah. The rest of the DNA carried in every cell of our body remains dormant. Huh. There's several theories behind this. Uh, one is that uh, these this dormant DNA is actually... Uh, Part of our ancestry. In other words, if you if you look at a fetus in different stages, it'll have a tail. Yes. Uh, it will appear to have flippers or fins or you know uh, gills or there. We go through these different sh- different shifts and changes, almost like we are evolving within the womb to get to a human uh, uh, child. One theory says that Enoch was written before Genesis. And, of course, one theory says that Genesis was written before Enoch and Enoch borrowed from it. But if you look at uh, the the different... um, Genesis was written by several people, and so was Enoch. Enoch was put together over a period of hundreds of years, a yeah. couple, couple hundred years. But the first book in the book of Enoch, if you will, the, the first, uh, uh, let's call it the foundational book, uh, that's called the Book of the Watchers. Yes. If you compare that to the P, P is in Paul, or in this case P is in priest, if you compare that to the priestly additions to Genesis, you have several things that uh, that kind of stick out. There, there are parallels that uh, talk about uh, the fallen angels and they talk about uh, uh, Cain and Abel and, and all of these things. Uh, when you lay them down, it looks like it looks like they drew from the same source. It looks to us like Enoch was written, you know, around 200 B.C., but it was considered to be a holy book because we know that uh, uh, Jude quoted it for an entire paragraph.
So one must ask oneself, do we have different hierarchies? Because in the very beginning of the whole thing, you had one-third of the angels rebelling and going with Lucifer. Yes. You had Lucifer falling to earth, and you had those angels doing something that was uh, contrary to God and being punished and being cast out. So now they are out of the uh, uh, they are out of the heavenly. They are someplace else. We well, have that fall. Joseph, could that be related to in Genesis one, where they say, "Let us create. Let let us." Um, that's a very troublesome word. So when they fell, um, could that have been the time when they fell? Yes, because there is another troublesome word in that same chapter that says uh, that men should replenish the earth, and it must be punished another time to be replenished. Yes. Of course, the Gnostics have long since uh, answered that question by saying the world is so messed up because the uh, the god or the creator, Yagabah, was an insane angel. Yeah. <laughs> It must be that the actual creator is insane himself because the world is so insane. Yeah. Well, if you extrapolate that, you have the possibility that uh, the creator of this world, according to uh, their way of looking at it, was uh, uh, maybe one of these fallen angels. I don't have any trouble in cross-pollinating those two ideas to get the fact that uh, a fallen angel may have been uh, over some distortion that we have now on, on in this world.
let me ask you this question. Is much of the Old Testament taken from the um, Sumerian religions? Uh, <laughs> that is where this, this, I keep using the word cross-pollination because I can't think of any other way to describe it. Okay. Uh, if, if you take uh, what we have written down and believe as, for example, Noah and his ark. Yeah. And you trace that back to the uh, Gilgamesh uh, ethics and different things, you really have uh, some, some major borrowing going on. Yeah. You know, God is the skin color of whoever is talking to him. Yeah. And uh, he has the same habits and the same likes and dislikes as, uh, as the people who are praying to him. Yes. And, and so over a period of time, as the stories move from one place to the next, they morph into those people with those habits, and, uh, and the story becomes kind of... Uh, Changed and it, it evolves, if you want to use that word, according to what nationality and what culture it's being presented in. And that actually looks like what has happened over a period of time between the uh, Sumer uh, Sumerian uh, ethics and mm -hmm. part of what we have as the New Testament or the Old Testament. Well, if you look at Noah and his ark, you see a direct parallel to uh, the flood stories of. Uh, the times of Gilgamesh and, and the uh, God Kings, and could and, that uh, have actually taken place on Mars? I don't know. You, know. you can say that that story was written on Mars, but I don't know if it was uh, actually took place on Mars. Well, it could have been. Uh, if you look at the Ark as a type of spaceship. Yes. Yes. used to just love Gene Scott. <laughs> he, he was a was... fabulous old reprobate, wasn't he? Yes, he was. <laughs>